Uh, here I am presenting some of geomorphic tools. I am not, uh, in 10 minutes, I have not, uh, I have not the, 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 the goal to say all about, uh, about it, but at least to understand some of the things you can obtain with, uh, uh, with the tools we have. This is the last part of the a little history about uh, Luis Borges. Uh, now we we know how to extract a river network, and uh, in general, a river network is uh, uh, like this one, and uh, uh, we are mostly interested in, in this <coughs> this class to the part that is on the mountain. <coughs> and so, uh, <coughs> sorry, unfortunately, this is in Italian. But the things uh, over there is a uh, runoff generating area. Uh, here you have the regional uh, water table. Uh, here you have the transport zone, and here you have the delivery zone. Uh, after Shu, uh, you more or less distinguish these three parts of the, of the, of the morphology of a river network. Each of them have different geomorphic characteristics, say, even also cl climatic characteristics. Usually the, the part on the mountain is where the runoff is generated, where we have the more <coughs> rainfall due to topographic effects, uh, usually. Uh, here inside, you have the plan. Uh, in the plan, uh, you, you don't have very much rain sometimes. Uh, for instance, in the Pianura Padana, the plain here in Italy, uh, uh, is uh, the, the main rate of, uh, of rainfall is very low, it's around uh, 600 millimeter a year, which would classify, uh, classify the, that area almost as semi, semi arid also. But, uh, <coughs> but instead, uh, instead we have the river flowing there, bringing a lot of water from the mountain, and in fact the Alps and the Apennines, but especially the Alps are called the water tower of the, the, uh, the Pianura Padana. And uh, also uh, the fact that it's not raining a lot and the slope is low has uh, consequences of the nature of the hydrodynamics and the geomorphology of the river, which is different in the plan with uh, respect to the one which is the, where the last slope and more rainfall. And then obviously the last part has interactions with with, uh, uh, with <coughs> the or, uh, in other cases with big lakes or so. So we have, uh, you can have a delta or uh, other estuaries or things depending on different type of things. So uh, a river basin is not necessarily, we can distinguish parts in, in the river uh, basin and uh, the, the physics that works is always the same usually but has different manifestations. Since the beginning, meaning in, in the last century or even in the 18th, uh, 19th century, uh, um, it appears that there were some uh, laws regarding uh, 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 regarding the main geomorphic quantities, some of, of them now we are <coughs> really able to, to calculate, but uh, that at that time, at the time of that paper, we are just measured on the maps. A is the contributing area, and uh, Q is the discharge, B is the velo backfold velocity, or in other cases, the mean velocity. Uh, in spe uh, especially mean velocity in, in the river. Uh, w is the bed width under natural condition. D is the uh, the bed section of the river depth, um, uh, also in backfall conditions. And uh, what happens is that all these quantities, discharge plus velocity, Bandwidth and bank full discharge are related to the contributing area. And uh, uh, Meadow and Leopold uh, uh, 
showed in this famous paper, which is a nice paper to read <coughs> today. And uh, uh, they say essentially that uh, each one of the quantity is uh, a is a power law in the contributing areas, where the exponents c, m, and b, and f, therefore, stays in the relation because uh, we can see that the discharge is equal to the velocity times the width times the depth. Obviously, this is a, a simplification. The coefficient here in front are missing, but this means that m plus b plus f should be equal to C. And it turns out that they measured a lot of rivers. And it turns out that, uh, oh, sorry for the table, is in Italian the names, but uh, I think it's understandable for, a, for everybody. We have B, B. is the width, yes. F is the depth, and M is the velocity. And what you uh, see here is that the dependence on, uh, uh, on velocity of the bank full discharge and the dependence of area of the of the uh, of the bank full velocity is very small. So if I ask you, during a flood wave, the uh, the velocity of the flood wave is higher on the mountain or is it higher in the plain? I believe that most of you, even those who study hydraulics, would say is higher in the mountains. Instead, is higher in the plain. Because uh, we have three elements that contribute to the velocity, which is roughness, the hydraulic radius, and the slope. The slope is only one of the effect, and the, the roughness of the river on, on the plain is usually much, much less than the roughness of the river on the slope. So roughness and the the, the radius are the main factor in forming the velocity. So we could say that velocity is closely constant along the river. And uh, at the same time, we also observe here another <coughs> particular thing, which is the width of a river stream uh, seems to be uh, uh, related to the square root of the areas. And this is the statistic by Leopold and Maddock, but the others then took the statistics of many, many other rivers in the world. And this fit also for, uh, for most of the river. So this uh, uh, is kind of a thing that should be explained. We thought that we have uh, actually explained in some of our papers why it is like that. But and some other people too. <laughs> But let's say still, uh, uh, this is what what is the more the the large the la, uh, the, um, the the width of a river is uh, uh, related to the area is the most closely thing that there is in a hydrology to a law. Oh. The other thing is all in very empirical, but this is is closely to. And uh, here, in actually, in, uh, in my experience, I did uh, some simulation and things on the river networks years ago. And you see this is a log long plot. And you see in uh, this river here, there is a straight line in your relationship. But actually, it is not this type of, of laws that uh, I wanted to talk to you, but <laughs> Uh, specifically for, <coughs> for this thing we are doing here, uh, we will uh, we will uh, we are extracting the river network. So uh, and there are some extractions that gave you some some strange things like uh, uh, Strahler number or Hux number. So. Uh, Okay, this is a wrong thing. I was reading, I uh, wrote my name, I don't know. <laughs> I was distracted. But uh, since I did this slide in 10 minutes, we, we go. Um, uh, the important thing is that uh, I just put a uh, cut and paste my name instead of another thing. <laughs> <laughs> 
that happens. Uh, it's not very visible with this yellow, uh, but uh, what we see with this is a river here. We we recognize the the red part, the blue the blue part, and uh, the violet part that uh, at least are uh, recognizable. The yellow part are the initial streams, yeah. meaning we identify the tree, uh, the river like a tree. We have uh, the leaves of the tree <coughs> are called. Uh, are, are marked in yellow and they are called sources and they have <coughs> stellar or Horton stellar order of one when two sources meet they form a stream of order two when two stream of order two meets they form a, a, a stream of order three and when two three a stream of order three bits, they form a, a, a stream of order four, and so on. And if a stream of order n meet a stream of order of different order, uh, who wins is the stream of, of higher order, meaning the stream is not changing name and maintain the name of, of the higher order. So, for instance, you see, the red one is four, the red one keeping many other streams of order three. Ah, okay, two of order three on the back over there form the, init the, in the initial part of the streams, the stream of order four, but then we have stream of order three going in here, and here is not changing any anything. This is called Strahler <coughs> Horton order of the, of the network. It was particularly useful particularly useful when, uh, uh, when there were no, uh, when we, were, we had maps and not, uh, uh, and, and not uh, digital maps like, in, like we have today. So this is the uh, Strahler Orton ordering of the stream and when we, the Strahler Horton ordering is coming out as one of your results. So you can visualize a thing like this in raster format, actually, or uh, in vector format. And now that you have the stream numbers in this way, uh, the, uh, what will, can you do? You can do several things. For instance, uh, you can take the you can take the number of the streams. So here we have one streams of order four. <coughs> one, two, three, four, five streams of order three. And much more streams of order two and much, and much more streams of order one. Uh, if we count the number of the streams uh, uh, of, of a certain order omega, we say, say that n omega is the number of the stream and uh, we can call this bifurcation ratio which is the number of stream of order n, uh, omega minus one divided by the number of stream of order omega the streams of order omega minus one is larger than the stream of so this is a number uh, uh, going to be larger than one but uh, in effect is almost clo is close to four it's, it's close to four it tends to be a constant along the river and all the rivers in the in the world have a number close to four and this is uh, three there is quite an historic an historic picture by David Bottom, and uh, you see here the the bifurcation ratio is four. We can do other things. We we can say, haha, which is the area upstream of a stream of, of a certain order? Okay, there of order four we have just one stream, so it's the whole area. But of order three, we have three or four, uh, we say five streams of order three. And uh, so we take the area which of each one, each one has a different areas. We take the average of the areas 
and uh, we built the uh, uh, the area ratio, which is the area of order omega divided by the area of order omega to minus one. Ah, this is a number greater than one. Then we know. And uh, in the, usually it's a little larger than Rb when we do e uh, experiment. Uh, we measure on, on on the network. And uh, also this number is close to four. It's a little larger. We can do. Aha, uh -huh, I forget one thing to, do, to put in the slide, but we can do the same for the length. Let me say if I put the length here. Okay, I didn't put the length. But we can do the same for the length of the streams. The same for area and the strength and the, the length. The, the, the low about the length is a particularly important for a thing that I will say in a few minutes. And uh, we can have the length ratio, RL, which is the, the length of the stream of a certain order divided by the, the length of the stream of the order n minus 1. <coughs> it happens that this uh, uh, ratio, the length ratio, is equal to 2. For the other two, to this one. We can also have the slope. Doing the slope, doing the slope is a little bit uh, uh, estimating. So one challenge for you now you have the scalar ordering of the river. You count the length of each stream of a certain order. You couple the statistics. This is a little bit more difficult than the exercises you do so far. <coughs> and uh, we calculate this, uh, the how Horton scalar lows. Uh, what I am not still telling you um, okay I'm not still telling you why these uh, uh, parameters are 4 and 2 I will say a few uh, a little bit below that another quantity that we can call, call is this one uh, we can calculate, uh, we say yesterday that with the radius directions, we can calculate the distance from any point to the outlet. But in another quantity, which is kind of the reversal of this, this quantity, is the distance between <coughs> the outlet and the longest distance up there. If I am sitting in a place, which is the main and the longest distance I can go, we call that arc length. Obviously, you have, you have to make <coughs> choices, choices because when you go down, you have the flow of water that say where you go. But when you go up, you have uh, branches, or uh, you and then you follow the branch which has the largest drainage area. Or if you have two branches with the same region drainage area, you go in the direction where you have the longest path, maybe. Or otherwise, you choose a trend I mean, if they are really equal. It is quite impossible that they be equal unless you are at the very top here. So you go to the divide, you follow here, you have to go to the divide, you can have this, uh, this stream. So you start from here, you trace the main streams of the river, which is a, a thing that uh, was. Uh, uh, it was uh, very important for the geographer of the 19th century, which is the longest river of the world, for instance. So you, now you can calculate exactly with this thing. You And uh, uh, we also get a number in the sense that we have the mainstream. The mainstream is numbered one. Then in the mainstream, we have the streams going out from the mainstream and uh, you have the, the, the arc streams of order 2 and so on, some kind of a reversal uh, numbering. Why I did this? I did this actually during my PhD. <coughs> and uh, because uh, there were this hack law that say that 
and that is a relation between the area, the contributing area, that should be a reasonable. <laughs> that is the the length of the of the mainstream. Uh, the, uh, uh, this answer to the question: I, if I have an area of uh, one square, uh, one hundred square kilometers, how is the length of the mainstream? I go here and I get the length, and you don't understand because uh, there there is a. Uh, the, the legend is not is not clear, but that is the length of the mainstream. And you see that here there, there are power laws. Actually, there are the average length and, and all the other moments like uh, the mm, the the average length, the um, the variance of the length, the third moment of the length. Of of the distribution, and it's a little bit more complicated this thing. But the essential question is, giving an area, how long is the, the main street? And uh, it turns out that the, 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 the relation between the length of the mainstream and the area uh, goes like a power law of 0 0.50 something, more than the square root. If I take this one and I say I take a straight line, <coughs> uh, the straight the re, uh, the, mm, the relation between any take two, okay, <coughs> take the big computer. <laughs> take the big computer. This also the, la the the mainstream is here, which is the uh, I have two points in my graph. The, the, there I have several points. And uh, which okay. is uh, the law that interpolates uh, the relationship between areas and the, ma the mainstream length. In this type of figures, I expect the exponent is 0 0.5. In, in River, is more than 0 0.5. Hux <coughs> found in the 1957 that was around 0.56. And also, these laws seems to be quite universal, <coughs> quite universal. Right? So we have this thing which, which is a fact, uh, which is a law. That is this book that explains all these facts. Uh, they also, and also my PhD thesis, which is part in part of the the topic of these books. Actually, I did this Im image here. <laughs> And uh, the, the thing is that all the rivers are fractals. So uh, the rivers are structured, are like lines, but they cover all the plain. And it turns out, for instance, that uh, the, uh, the logarithm of RB, the bifurcation ratio, be divided by the logarithm of the length ratio, which is logarithm of 4 divided logarithm by of 2, is equal to the fractal dimension of the river, which is 2 <laughs> in this case. So that's uh, explain why almost all the river in the world scales with this orthogonal standard law. The good thing of this book is that uh, the authors, and uh, for the part that are regarding is is we uh, try to derive the fact that the river are fractals from dynamic principles. In the past, these laws were very important because we have no data. We had no data about topography. Now we know the earth topography meter by meter. But at that time, even when I started, not so I'm not so old. <laughs> I'm not so old. And uh, but when I started, that there were no maps for certain part of the of the earth. So it was important to know from the we didn't know where the river course was, but we know maybe the areas more or less shoot. So we were able to guess how long was the, the mainstream. And from this information, we also uh, find hydrological information about the hydrological response of that river. Something very rough, <coughs> which is now 
now is not more uh, uh, as useful as used to be because we have all the info topographical information that we need and so in a sense we don't need anymore those laws uh, even if they lo uh, those actually um, help us to know uh, something about the dynamics that is going on so it remains also in the tools so you calculate the strain order and this remains also in the way that people do because if you talk to a, a, a geologist for instance you say oh let's go to a stream a, a, a catchment of order zero you say what is then this catchment of order zero is a head water catchment where there is no no stream then there is the stream of order one the stream of order two and so the, this thing entered so much in the language of the people especially uh, uh, the geomorphologists that you uh, still today even even when the, these laws are not so important they permit the, the, any uh, any s speech about these things so you have to know you can calculate also other, other things like drainage density what's drainage density? drainage density is the ratio between the length of the the, 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 <coughs> the blue lines that you have on top still one thing that you can easily see or detect from maps above the area drainage length under certain condition we have which has to do with the distribution of how the, the geometry of the river is you can deduce the fact that uh, the inverse of this quantity the drainage density is proportional to the length of the hill slope so if you want to if the, the, the time that water stays in, in this slope is important for you you know that uh, is a uh, much uh, much larger is the drainage density much less the water stays in the hill slope because the hill slope is smaller this is a quantity again that is easy to calculate from a map because you have the total area you can more or less follow the mainstreams and calculate the drainage density so badlands for instance Calanchi in Italiano badlands has a, a very high very high drainage density this affects the geomorphology this affects the hydrology this affects sediment transport and everything actually is a consequence is a fact that sediment transport and the hydrology are very interconnected there so, but you now you can calculate for any point inside the basin instead of doing one point for a map as you do in the past now with just a click with the tools that you learned today and yesterday you can calculate for any point inside the basin and this is for instance a map of drainage densities there were uh, uh, theories that were used let's say 50 years ago that starts in the things like that uh, with a, a, a statement like that uh, assume that the drainage density of the river is constant meaning that all the islopes <coughs> have the same shape now you can measure and you see that actually the uh, drainage density is not constant you have variation of the drainage density at least in several in some parts of, of the catchment and this is connected again to ge the geomorphic processes acting there so these things are still telling to you something about hydrology and geomorphology <coughs> actually now we can measure the length of the of the, of the hill slope uh, today we have seen more or less if you probably you you don't have done yet but you can extract the hill slope we know what is the hill the hill slope is connected to a link you extract the there's things that you have a, a few tools there where you can con construct an, an attribute and extract what is a what is a hill slope and then you can calculate the, the length of the hill slope meaning how much 
uh, all the point of the gear slope takes to go to the next to the next channel and how long uh, how long is the slope in average? This is a map of it. Yeah, and this is what it was supposed to be the inverse of drainage density. So in a sense we don't even know from this point of view, we don't know we don't need now to have the drainage density because if our scope was to estimate the length of the of the hill zone. And we have, uh, and that is what I say here. Uh, uh, we, there are for geomorphologists for who does sediment transport. I'm not going inside, very inside the, this concept. That are in a sense all of twenty years, thirty years, al almost thirty years now. We, you can also have do a, map, a scatter plot like this, where you have on the. Uh, Y axis, the slope, actually the logarithm of the, of the slope is a bilogarithmic axis. This, and uh, you have the contributing area here. So you take two maps, you put in correspondence each of the points on the map, and you do this scatter plot. This could be an exercise for every one of you. And then what you obtain is a, is a sort of a curve like that. Uh, then you trace the curve which is uh, in black there which is you take you beam the things here and uh, you make the average of the point that is the average the black dot the big black dot are the average of the pointers that are around them and you see that you have uh, things like this one you know that is a uh, a line, a straight line, and the straight line uh, in is a power law in this graph if you, because this is a log log plot. And the exponent says that the, the actually the slope there is related to the area, the contributing area with the slope of minus 0.5. And that part it turns out to be in the channels. So in channels there is happening something different that is happening hexaword. So now I am showing another image here, which is unfortunately originally is in Italian, is an <laughs> originally is in, 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 in English, and so in the Nature paper where it was published by uh, Montgomery and Dietrich is, is is in English. Here unfortunately is Italia, but the idea is that you have a graph where you have slow slope here and the area over there is actually the reverse of this one where you have area here and slope on the other side. But you uh, just on the on, on the on this planar thing you can separate areas point where different type of processes, geomorphic processes are acting. This is a long story to, to tell you, but some of you should, uh, should go deeper in that. You know, you have here stable part of the landscape where diffusion process is dominated. You have uh, uh, um, overland flow here without erosion. We have uh, debris flow over there mm -hmm. and we have uh, landsliding over here all this line that I trace here comes from a, a simplified theory of the processes but the, the main idea is that when you are sit in a place according to slope and the contributing area that you measure and some other things that you measure, maybe you measure locally you can kind of guess what type of um, process is going on. And this is a very beautiful story. But using that plot, uh, you can uh, provide a, a, a big map of the different areas. Yeah, but then there is a difference, actually. When I, yes. it's a long time that but I don't mean to be Dietrich, but uh, Dietrich. But when I, I 
I meet him usually he shows his he show to me his shows and now I am not like I, I used to be so my sh my shoes are not so uh, so Italian style <laughs> he say you know he, he always has a uh, mountain shoes so he says you know, I am a field guy you are doing the things by computer so uh, when a, a thing that go in the field he takes a hill slope you get, you get, you get to, to walk on a hill slope, the hill slope is sloped. So it's difficult to go on the hill slope. You take measurements on there, you, uh, you, you do things. You have to take care of, of your, to be healthy, to do things. Mm -hmm. And so you, you analyze mainly one, one hill slope. Mm -hmm. But because I am a, a, an engineer with a the Italian shoes, I stay on the computer, I take a large, a large river and do the same analysis of the EM over a large catchment. Uh, over the large catchment, different geological processes are going on. So I mess up all the statistics, the beautiful statistics that I say here. So meaning, if you see this one, this one is going to refer to a certain visual where the, pros the processes are more or less the same. But uh, I, if I have different Islam from different mythology, different geology, I can have the same curves, but when I mix all the points together, all, uh, everything comes to, to be a me really a mess. So uh, one thing is that that's true. <coughs> if I use this, this plot for, for, getting, for getting information, this plot in particular, but you have also to separate the domains on the basic of uh, some heuristics. You can do take a, all over the world and do the statistics and pretend to obtain clear results. So the main message is that we have a lot of, that, that there will be a lot of stories behind it, but we go beyond the, the scope of this, uh, of, of this class, uh, particularly interesting for geomorphologists or hybrid geomorphologists. Mm -hmm. But uh, I can tell you if you are interested in something. <laughs> <laughs>